why aren't there more women in the production beat making space? That's a, a question with a lot of complex answers, I'm sure. You hear that same question asked about other career fields, uh, technology, for example men in the producer community why aren't there more female producers that's certainly a conversation that hasn't led to any solutions yet um, so it's a conversation worth continuing i just feel like the the least we can do the least i can do uh, as a as a male straight male in the production space is to not make that space even less welcoming which means you know not not being a creep. I mean, let's be honest. If I post an interview with a male producer, the comments are not going to be about his appearance. The comments are not going to be musing about whether or not I should date this producer. They're not going to be asking about this male producer's relationship status. If they insult the producer, it's probably going to be on the basis of something other than their appearance or sexuality. So as individuals, yes, it's easy to have impulse control and just not be an asshole. But what's probably harder for us is to make not being a creep a habit and then holding others accountable for that behavior when we see it happen, which is probably something a lot of us aren't willing to do. So if we're not willing to do that, why even ask? Why aren't there more women in the in the music producer beat maker space? That's my intro, so enjoy part two of I think one of the most informative producer interviews I've ever done. Shout out to Neon Vines and shout out to all the producers who volunteered and spoke on the Beat Stars Summit that uh, I hosted along with Dame Ritter. And thanks to the to the over 6,000 people who tuned in live and the thousands of others who checked out the recordings. Let's be honest, you're not gonna find these videos anywhere else. Why? Because I make them. So it would really help me out if you subscribe. If you've already subscribed, what also really helps is if you like the video and leave a comment. It's hard in the era of clickbait videos on YouTube and negativity in the producer community. And I appreciate your support, thank you so much. Looking at your social media, looking at your visual branding, looking at your consistency, I mean, it, it seems like you're a, a very clear choice for brand partnerships. Um, What's your approach to creating the kind of content that you create for social media? Because that's a big challenge for creatives. That's a good question. Yeah. So for me at first, when I was becoming Neon Vines, like I had no goals. Like I had no, like sponsorships was never even like a, a possibility. Like I that was just not even on my radar at all. So I just started posting I posted like a video of me performing with a setup or something and then a couple other pictures of me. Um, and then I was just like, Hey, I'm going to take a picture of me with all my studio gear. So I took a picture of myself with all my gear. All of a sudden it's like, Oh shit, I'm getting a ton of likes on that. Like very noticeable difference from the other content I was posting. So it started to make me think, okay, what are people actually interested in here? And it's the combination of me being a female, which I'm, all, will always own up to that is a very valuable asset for me in my career and me having a lot of knowledge about studio gear and being a nerd in that whole world so it's the combination of those two factors that is my appeal and what is really my brand and it took me a minute to figure that out but once I did I was like okay well what are people interested in hearing from me because clearly like visually that's appealing but the captions are just as important as the photos so for me, I started realizing if I ask people a production question or if I try to just have a discussion with people um, about, you know, something that everybody can contribute to. What's your workflow? Uh, what's your preferred piece of gear? How do you start a project? Things that are basic that everybody can have something to say about. Um, it really got people engaged. And a lot of studio accounts started sharing me and sharing my studio pictures, which really helped me get more followers. And... I started um, thinking, okay, well, the focus is really on the gear, though. It's it's me and the gear, but it's mostly the education and the gear. Because I would post pictures of myself, and they would be like, like no one, no one fucking cared, you know. But like, if it's me and my gear, like that was the combination that I figured out worked. And then I don't know, I just kind of took that to where it is now. But and you you probably have a schedule for yourself. You seem hyper organized. Yeah. So like. With my content, there's like a couple different categories of things that I can post. So I do gear and software spotlights where I sort of like, you know, dive in onto one specific piece of gear, um, post a picture of me holding it, and then have a discussion about just that piece of gear and, you know, tell people about why I think it's cool. 
what I think it's useful for and things like that. And then there's obviously video clips of me performing and then there's the full studio pictures and things like that. So that's kind of like the balance that I find and I get the most likes on my full studios. So I try to like, um, pace those, so to speak, um, and not do them too close together and not do them too far apart. So for me, it's like the, the trifecta. So it's like a gear spotlight, a video post, a full studio, um, and kind of like balance those out in between. Yeah, and then the genius of you, and it's kind of sneaky of you, of your social media posts is that you change, and it took me asking you directly, because um, your walls kept changing. And I was like, is she in a new studio every time she posts? There's mm -hmm. no way. Yeah. Then that's green screen? Okay. I tell people it's green screen because it's easier to explain, but it's Photoshop. Yeah. Okay. It's I, sort of the same Photoshop. concept, though. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I literally like on my phone, just like color in the background. Um, it takes like hours, <laughs> like, it takes a while. But um, yeah, I kind of like tricking people because everybody's always asking me that. I'm like, mm, what do you think it is? I don't know. Yeah. Well, thanks for asking, answering my question yeah. directly and not doing the, the shoulder roll no. with me. Um, <laughs> so elephant in the room and you mentioned it, um, you know, given that non cisgendered males mm -hmm. are the minority in the production world. I imagine you receive, like you said, some benefits and some, some additional attention just being a female producer. I mean, the fact that um, that we're doing this interview and this is my first interview with a woman oh, in the production awesome. space. Well, it feel, it's, it's awesome, but it's also a really yeah, shitty feeling. And I, you know, I have a lot of people um, in Beat Club, uh, which is my production mentorship program. I have a couple of women uh, in the program and one of them, Angel Ray, kept actually last night asked me when I was going to interview a, a woman producer. I'm like, good timing, because if I didn't have this scheduled, I'd really feel like a jerk. Um, but I imagine you being in this space also garners some pretty negative attention as yeah, well. Yeah, so um, I think the thing about being a woman is that it takes more to get people's attention in a like legitimate, respectful way, like for your art and for your craft. Like, I feel like you have to do more to kind of get over that initial hump of skepticism. Um, but once you are like once, cause for me now, like I get a lot less hate than I used to, but like at the beginning when like, I didn't prove myself yet, like I really wasn't doing a whole lot. I was just taking pictures of myself with my gear. I don't blame people for sort of being like, come on. Like she doesn't know what she's doing. Like, and I would get a lot of like, does she even know how to use the gear? Does she even know what she's doing and stuff like that? And it used to bother me a little bit, but I don't have the time now to get upset over like ignorance and shit like that. And like, if anyone's going to post stuff like that now, it's just because they have like literally didn't even take the time to like see what they're talking about uh, or go to my page or anything like that. But I think the negative side of sexism is more toward the beginning of the process, but like as you, you're pushed through it and as you continually put out more content, prove your worth and prove your legitimacy, people take you more seriously and people give you respect. So, um, you know, there's been challenges for sure with that, but mostly it is such an asset. Like, you know, I, I'm blessed. I feel personally to be a woman and have that different angle, um, in the industry to be able to stand out. Cause, like, it's all about doing something different to stand out now because there's so many people. It's, it's you know, so saturated. And do you feel like there's an expectation for you to kind of represent your whole gender simply because you are a woman in this space? Um, you know, I don't really think about it like that. Like, I'm not hyper-focused on the fact that I'm a woman. Like, I'm aware of that, obviously. Um, but that's not something that I'm consciously, like, thinking about and like how I'm representing females or anything like that. Literally like I just do what I want to do. Like I, I really just make the music that I'm passionate about and follow that. Like I don't, you know, lay awake in bed at night thinking about like all the ways I've been disadvantaged or because I'm a woman or all things related to that. Like I lay awake thinking about what am I going to do tomorrow to be a better person a better music producer, not a better female music producer. Um, and just a better version of myself than I was yesterday. So 
I don't focus on it in, you know, overly focus on it, but I'm totally aware that that's part of my appeal. And I have to be because I have to be aware of how I should be presenting myself as my branding, you know, my social media and things like that. So I try to find the balance between all of that. I hear the question a lot, um, mostly from men, um, asking why there aren't more female producers. Mm -hmm. And when I get asked the question, I just say, hey, probably because a lot of you guys are creeps and misogynists. <laughs> but um, from your perspective, obviously, as someone who's gone through that, and you're kind of, you're kind of a shock trooper in a, in a sense. Um, in this space, what what would your answer be to that, and, and what do you think could change about the producer space to make it not make it more welcoming, but facilitate more women coming in and, and thriving in the space? You know, that's a really good question um, that I haven't thought much about. Um, I think it's just like because women don't really even like consider it a possibility so to speak because there's like not that many females doing it and a lot of the reason people are inspired to do anything is because they see someone else doing it and they're like oh shit I want to do that you know and there's not a lot of females to identify with so I think it would help um just the, over time it's going to get better and it's going to balance out just because there's going to be more females that do it and then there's going to be more females that see females doing it and it's going to just kind of work out that way but <clears throat> as far as getting more females to do it, I think it's just a cultural shift that's going to happen naturally. Um, I don't know if there's any specific event or something that would make that happen, but yeah, no, that's a good question. So visibility is probably a big factor. I think so. Yeah. I think just seeing more females do it would inspire more girls. Because a lot of girls reach out to me and message me and say, like, you really inspire me. I... Um, Another important aspect of my social media is that I give everybody the time and I give genuine feedback to every person. So I try my best to respond to every single comment, which is not always easy, but <clears throat> you know, sometimes I'll get like 700 comments on a picture, but I take the time to not just say like some generic bullshit to somebody, but to really like read what they're saying, give them genuine feedback. And that goes a long way. It really does because people don't forget that and it, it means a lot. And I do it because I want to, not because I'm trying to be strategic or, you know, trap people into liking me or something. Just because, like, I, I want to engage with people. If somebody took the time to write something to me that was well thought out um, and genuine, I better do the same to them. And that's just kind of how I am. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I guess back to social media since we're talking about this. A lot of producers that I see getting great opportunities you know partnerships and and you're branching i mean i think you did that thing on youtube where it was the oh. god i forget it was four producers one sample which is amazing yeah. and and you know shout out to that platform because yeah. i have seen other women involved mm -hmm. in, in that in that um i guess that yeah. challenge um so so that's that's cool to yeah, see sure. uh but with your content on social media it's not just selfie mm -hmm. time it's a really nice and well presented and consistent in terms of the visual branding and the color grading and everything, you're just putting your best foot forward. What did that take? Because a lot of producers don't necessarily know Photoshop. They don't know video editing. They don't have the equipment mm -hmm. to do that. How, how did you, how did you learn to do so, all that? Uh, that's, you know, there's a lot of things I want to say about that, but there's, a lot of different strategies that people have about how you should be doing your social media. Some people will tell you, a lot of people will tell you, you should be posting as frequently as you possibly can. Um, that's not completely true because if you're posting BS frequently, you're going to lose, mm. like it's going to, you're going to, it's not going to work out for you. So it's the balance between quality content and frequency of content. And for me, I'm not very frequent at posting. I probably post like on average every five days, um, which is not very frequently for Instagram, and Facebook and things like that. But for me, I've found that I'm still able to grow my fan base that way because everything I'm posting, I consider to be quality in that I feel like it adds value to people or at least could have the potential to add value to somebody. So I'm not gonna post like a picture of myself and have the caption be, hey, what are you doing today? Does that add value to anyone's life? No. What I try to do 
is find the balance between sharing my insight and knowledge and offering an opportunity to, for other people to share theirs too and contribute. So I try to, in my captions, say something about a piece of gear or my studio setup that I think is cool and that I'm learning recently and then offer people an opportunity by a simple question to say, so what about you? What are, what are you doing? Or, and, you know, having, like I said, that discussion going, um, I think that adds value to people. So I think value in post is much more important than frequency of posting. Now, you have found the ultimate balance, though, which is frequency and value. And that's something I'm trying to work toward, which is posting more frequently, but having every post provide value. And that's what you do. So that's why. I do. Oh, you, po- you post more than I, I do know. on Instagram. I don't honestly. know. I don't know. I'm on a Saturday only schedule. Yeah. But feel, stories, like, story, like, I, I just. That counts, too, though. I just feel like I see presence on yeah. social media consistently. And that's something. I mean, maybe that's not true, but that's my perception. So what, either way, you're doing something right. That's my sneaky trick. Like you have your 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 green yeah. screening, which is now <laughs> exposed fully on this interview exclusively. Um, so so exposing more. Uh, what do you have coming <clears throat> up this year? Oh my goodness. Um, let me think of what I can say because there's a couple things that I am not ready to fully announce yet. Um, that will come to fruition within a, a couple months. But I'll say that there's going to be a lot more traveling um and things related to brand partnerships um a lot more content creation and specific kinds of content creation um that i'm being commissioned to do for a couple different brands and then i'm going to be speaking on a panel at south by southwest actually with um abe Batchon, um ceo of beat stars and then yeah. shout out to abe. yeah and then um yeah, so there's that. I think when is South by? I think it's like mid March or something. And so right now, honestly, I'm like recharging because this is my first break, like in a minute, and I'm focusing on things that like I just personally want to do for no particular brand related goal. Like I'm working on a song right now that I'm really feeling and really excited about. Like I've been looking forward to this for a month because I haven't been able to do it, you know. So that's what I'm focusing on for the next couple of weeks. And then it's like diving right back into a lot of brand work and stuff like that, which is great. And especially since I need to make money and it's a good way to make money. So are we going to see uh, an album or EP or some kind of body of work? I wouldn't, I'm not really like focused on that. It's more of like the pairing of visuals and performance with my songs. Like for me, I feel like another important like branding play that I'm doing is that it's how I'm performing my music that is appealing to people because I try to use unique combinations of gear in, you know, ways that they're hooked up. That's maybe not traditional that might inspire somebody to try something cool. Um, I feel like that's for me is the best way to present my art while it would be so much easier for me to just like make an EP and just put the songs out. I feel like it's worth, um, taking the time to have a video for every song um, and try to flex a little bit on people. <laughs> but honestly, like I would not, all the videos I put on my YouTube, there's no fucking way like I would perform them like that and, on stage. Um, I like risk reduce that a lot more, but for video purposes, I try to flex and show off, I guess, to be honest. Are we going to see any neon vines editions of gear or, or software coming out? Um, I'm going to have to say that question is TBD. Um, but yes, there's, there's movement in that realm, so to speak. I, okay. That's all I did. <laughs> we can end the interview there. That was, that's my, that's my exclusive. Um, how do, how do people follow you and, and see all this amazing content oh, that you're you. posting? Um, you can follow me. I guess my prime place right now is Instagram and YouTube, um, YouTube for full content, like full on songs and then Instagram for educational little blips and stuff like that so yeah just search neon vines what's what, what is the instagram username is it's, it just neon, uh, vines? neon underscore vines and then youtube just search neon vines yeah. and you'll come up it's a unique name i don't think i don't think you have much competition there well hey 
once again, thank you for taking a break from, from your schedule and sitting down and, and sharing your experiences. Yeah, thank you so much. Seriously, this is awesome.